Uh, I'm having some problems with the participants tab. Can you handle that, Ben? Oh, no, never mind. It's good. Um, all right. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. Um, this is going to be exciting. Uh, I, Joanna, Jacob, and I will be uh, uh, sharing some of the conlangs we've made. Um, unless anybody else has a, a walk on. Um, uh, do you guys, Joanna, Jacob, have any preference whether you go first, second, third? I'm fine with whatever. I can go last. That way you guys can go first. Jo I know Joanna's like also trying to do another Zoom call. <laughs> okay, she's, yeah. uh, so I, whatever is probably most convenient for her. Uh, so Joanna wants to go second. OK. Um, why, don't, why don't you go first, Jacob, if that's all right? So I can like add, add on extra time. Uh, with uh, I'm allowed to share my screen. Okay, yes, perfect. I think you should have the permission. Okay, uh, let me just get this out of the way. Okay, so here we go. We got the languages of Ogris. So, uh, Ogris is a fictional planet or like world that I've been uh, that my languages are spoken in. It's not. It wasn't like the languages are the primary focus. The world is just secondary. But yeah, so I make a lot of conlangs uh, in my spare time and. Uh, I've actually, I've uh, been conlanging since uh, seventh grade uh, is when I first found out about the hobby. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember exactly how, but I do remember it was vaguely related to some guy who made a conlang in his room or like made a nation in his room. And I found about that guy and then I figured why not, I can do that too. And so I made my first conlang, it was called Kiakli uh, and it was heavily based off of Cherokee. Uh, and it was basically like a very bad version of Cherokee. <laughs> but uh, since then, I've been making numerous language, numerous conlangs and languages, and most of them I've given up because, you know, I've, I'm constantly learning and making them better. But um, starting in this last year, I've been trying to make like a mega project. And that mega project takes place in this little area that you see right here, uh, on the top left of the corner. It's a map of this area with on the, within the planet of Oberus where the languages are spoken. Uh, and these are my main languages. Uh, the text is kind of hard to read because it's in white, but uh, yeah. So uh, also down in the bottom right corner is a little diagram of the plant that I drew. Uh, it, I wanted it to have retrograde uh, rotation, kind of like Uranus. So this was for reference was what it used to look like, the, the map of the planet. Uh, very much so different as you can see, <laughs> but I, I, I like to think that I've uh, improved a lot since then. So here's some of my favorite traits in a conlang uh, that I, I commonly use all of these. Uh, so vowel harmony, I used a lot in the older languages. Um, it's super fun, but it's also kind of difficult to use sometimes. But I really love isolating and polysynthesis. So the two opposite ends of the spectrum. I don't really like things that are in the middle. I love both. Um, so I have some examples of some that are isolating, some that are uh, polysynthetic, polysynthetic up there. And I use a lot of compounding when I make my words. Um, I, I'm not really a fan of, uh, you know, there's derivational morphology, but I'm not really a fan of uh, using like suffixes and stuff. I, I like to use these kind of like compounds. Uh, eng, I love eng. It's my favorite phoneme. <laughs> uh, and then non-base 10 counting systems. My favorite, of course, is eight, but I, I'm, also, I'm also privy to, uh, or not privy, I'm also uh, a fan of six, base six. And uh, things I hate, P. No, but for real, I hate labials and also tenuous aspirate voice distinctions, especially, you know, when I was trying to teach myself Chinese, I hate, I hated trying to distinguish between tenuous and aspirate. It's the hardest thing ever for me for some reason, but uh, I ended up using them in my conlangs anyways. But with the introductory stuff out of the way, let's see what my actual conlangs look like, right? So uh, the one that I made this, that started that, you know, the September 2019 redo is called Nai Sangah Riel. And I started working on it this summer uh, and I based it pretty heavily off of the shifts from Poe Germanic to Old Norse. I wanted it to have uh, umlaut was one of the biggest things I wanted, uh, umlaut and just non-concatenative morphology. Um, I wanted to have some kind of cool mysterious consonant that would shift over time. And in the old form, it was a velarized R. Uh, and I ended up having that, I think, become like, it ended up causing vowels to shift and it uh, had played like a like a palatization role, but it was a pretty cool consonant. Eng, of course, uh, a base six number system, uh, and no verb for to have. Instead, it accomplishes it with uh, a construction, meaning 
uh, by me for alienable possession and in me for inalienable possession. So like, for example, I have an arm, you would say arm is in me uh, for I have a dog, dog is by me because, you know, if it's in you, then they can't really take it from you. If it's by you, then it can be take, taken from you. So that's kind of how the have possession works, but let's look at some of the phonology. So I've attached some of the charts for you real quick. If you can look very simple um, vowel system, although there were also uh, syllabic consonants. So um, the labial semi uh, labial semivowel and the palatal semivowel can both be uh, can both act as excuse me as uh, uh, syllabic consonants uh, taking the place of a vowel. Um, and yeah. Also, I think S and X, or X, the, the alveolar fricative and the velar fricative can also do the same thing. Uh, and yeah, so I have just a little uh, romanization of some of the consonants that are a little bit less uh, clear, but everything else I just use IPA for. Uh, yeah, so this is a, it was a pretty pretty simple phonology. Uh, gave me enough room to work with with shifts and sound shifts. I like to use sound shifts when uh, dealing with my conlings, but that was the little basic phonology. And then the numbers, which was my favorite part by far. So I actually did it, I, I, I used like a modified version of like the, the Arabic numeral counting. So instead of having it go the highest magnitude to the left, lowest magnitude to the right, I did the opposite. So I had the lowest magnitude to the left and the highest magnitude to the right, as you can kind of see in this chart. Um, and yeah, you basically, basically the way it works is it just, the, there's these roots for numbers and kind of like in Eastern uh, languages, you just use, you just, you know, put the roots before or after each other. Um, so since the word for six essentially acts as the word for 10, to make the word for seven, you just say six, one, eight is six, two, um, nine is six, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, yeah, numbers I thought were very, fu very fun. I, I really enjoyed making these, but uh, nothing much to say about that. But then we can go on to our, some of our inflectional uh, morphology. Uh, it's shamelessly spoke, stolen from Proto-Indo-European. Uh, I had an athematic and a thematic declension. Um, and yeah, there is also a, a inanimate animate distinction in gender, um, just because why not, right? <laughs> uh, a dual and a plural. Um, as you, it, you can very clearly see that this was stolen from Proto-Indo-European, but I really don't. I mean, it, it's 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 the only thing really that was stolen. Everything else in terms of syntax was was unique that I made, so I was okay with stealing this. Uh, and here's a little example of a um, sample text. So uh, there is free word order. Um, but I just wrote it in this because to make it easy for me to translate. Um, so I'll give a little dramatic read of the first line. And this is, by the way, if you can't tell, this is Genesis 1. Uh, yeah, that's a little sample text to my conlang. Um, and so you may be wondering, Jacob, where do you keep your words for your language? And uh, do you speak your languages? And what about dialects? And now I'm not going to answer the last question because I have not gotten there yet. I'm still trying to improve my skills and dialects is on the things that I'm trying to work on. But I do not speak my languages. Um, and so because of that, I had to keep all the words in somewhere, that, whether that be a dictionary or a notebook. Uh, and so the answer is I usually use late, uh, use Excel or notebooks. And so, like, for example, this is one of the notebooks I use. I just have a bunch of just notes scrambled all over the place whenever I you know, go anywhere. I always bring a notebook with me to jot down any ideas if I get any and I just write in there. Um, but I usually use uh, Excel. Um, lately, I've been using LaTeX. I try to teach myself that because it makes, uh, it, makes it look really, really nice. I don't, you'll be able to see an example of that in a little bit. Uh, but this is the lexicon for Nanisa Nafriel. And before I abandoned it, it had 154 words. It's not really abandoned. And uh, also the second, D, the second D right there is actually in there for a uh, humoric effect. But uh, uh, it's not completely abandoned. It's just not the thing I work on the most anymore. I still add stuff to it every so often. Uh, it's just not, the, it's not my main focus anymore. But my newest and most favorite is uh, Kingao. Uh, and so Kingao is a isolating language, if you can kind of tell from the name. Uh, and it uh, uses tone. It has a, it's a very simple tone system. It's high, low, mid. So just uh, keen, gao, right? The gao is mid tone, keen is high tone. Um, and there is technically a falling tone, but it's really just a high followed by a low uh, with where there's two vowels in, uh, that follow each other. Uh, and yeah, so uh, I started making this just very recently. Uh, and this is another one of those that just began as like just an idea in my notebook. And uh, 
Uh, and since then, it's gone through a lot. Uh, this is the phonology of it. It uses, you know, it's similar to a lot of other uh, languages in that, you know, it has onsets and finals, but only certain consonants can end a syllable. And so in this case, it's the sonorants um, and then uh, 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 stops. But the difference here is that uh, long vowels can only exist uh, when they're not followed by a stop. And that includes the glottal stop. Uh, and so what this ends up happening is uh, uh, this also alters the tonal system. So tones uh, are, there's, there's basically, there's the high, mid, low, but there's different variants depending on whether the vowel is long or short. In long uh, vowels, the tone gets broken such that it starts off a little lower uh, and then goes up or a little higher and then goes down. Or for the mid tone, it goes a little lower and then goes up. Uh, and so basically it's, Mostly similar, but there's just slight differences in that. Uh, and yeah, uh, you may notice that I really like labial velarization also. That's also a feature that I, I frequently use in most of my conlangs. Um, I just think it's cool, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. So some syntax, if you want to read through this, um, this is actually something that I, this, the, I decided the noun phrase order just actually this week. I was reading through this book uh, I checked out from the library a few weeks ago. It's uh, called A Grammar of Noon. Or known, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, but inspired me to make some syntax for noun phrases. So uh, that's all relatively new. Uh, yeah, these little quantifier, classifier things—they're optional, and they're actually only used um, when it's when the uh, like when the context requires it, or it's not entirely certain uh, what the word is referring to. Because there are a lot of homo uh, homophones in this language, due to just the nature of it having kind of a restrictive syllable structure. Um, and you know, there's only so many potential combinations that there can be. And so, since there's a lot of uh, homophony, you know, it's it's optional to use these little classifiers if you want. Uh, and by the way, just if you want for reference, this word literally just means thing. This word literally means spirit, and this thing means person. Uh, so yeah, that's just a little bit about syntax. Uh, yeah. So we can move on to sound changes. And so sound changes are what I use to make my languages. And I've, I've included just a little screenshot of my document where I keep my sound changes for uh, King Gao. And as you can see, it's a lot kind of unorganized. It's mostly just me kind of just jotting down things. And then I have a separate document where I go and I put them in order of how they occurred, when they occurred. Uh, so I can use that for making sound changes and shifts. Uh, and I, it also uses serial verb construction. Basically, you know, you can just use multiple verbs in a row to basically add to act as adverbs. Uh, and I, I include an example up there of uh, be, which is the word to sit. And it's also the continuous aspect marker. So, uh, hey, be, bu, which means the flower is opening. Uh, and then this is the dictionary. This is just the first page of the dictionary. Um, but as of today, it has 144 words. And so I figured just real quick at the end of my presentation, I figured why not make a word? And so if anyone has any suggestions for a concept that we can make, I am willing to make a word for it right now. So uh, I'll open it up to anyone who wants to suggest something. If not, I have an idea that we can make. I can show you guys how to make it. Did I see a, a velar uh, rise ang in your phonology? Uh... I, yeah, there's one. We, we, we should try to include one then. Yes. I have an idea. What's the, what's the idea for the concept? Um, so it's a noun for okay. uh, the idea for like when you walk into a room to do something, but the moment you walk in, you forget what you came in there to do. Okay, so we want to have uh, Nua in that. So uh, let's think about, uh, I'll go ahead and share my uh, Excel sheet that I have full of the dictionary, and that way you guys can see like how I do this. So, just real quick, the it's the concept that when you walk into a room and you forget where you're there. So, um, we're gonna want some kind of idea for like uh, to forget, and I'm thinking like forget and walk. That might be a good good combination to forget walk, and then like add thing right because or thought forget walk thought that might be good. Uh, and so I can just see if I have a word for, I don't think I have a word for forget. Oh, are you? Okay. Uh, maizan. So maizan is to forget. Uh, and then we can add uh, walk. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have that word. Yeah. Uh, gel. So my uh, uh, zan 
no, and then uh, head is also, uh, or thoughts. I don't think I have a word for thoughts. Let me see. I don't, but I should have a word for think. Uh, okay, we can just create one real, real quick. Uh, that can be where the ngua comes in. So I'll go ahead and go to my sheets. I'll add a root for to think. Uh, and in this language, was come from the uh, from the sequence of W or you know the the, the labial velar approximate plus na. Um, I'm thinking uh, ngwa ngwa works, I guess. So just use a schwa there. Uh, I don't know if I have a schwa on my anywhere nearby. Here we go. Oh God, okay. So then we get, or shoot. Uh, it sells is, uh, uh, sorry, Sheets is really weird about copy paste, but Joe, and then the word for thought or to think is now, uh, and I use, uh, y just temporarily to represent the schwa. So this is a long schwa. Um, also, actually, you know, I'm going to add tone to it. Let's uh, let's make it a high tone. And so in my language, high tones come from a high vowel or a, a palatal after the the vowel. And so in this case, now we have uh, the thought of the thought uh, or the feeling of when you walk into a room but forget your thoughts immediately and you walk out is my zanjel ngui. Or what? Yeah. So my son, what? And that's the word. So, yeah. There you go. And I can add that into my dictionary if I wanted to. And that's my presentation. So, thank you guys. That was that was really interesting. Thank you. Um, wh why do you hate labials? Uh, I don't know. I just really. I mean, the only labial that I don't like is the labial velar. Um, the, I, I dislike all of the other ones. I, I, I really cannot tell you. I think it's because the letter P looks ugly to me, I think. Uh, and then the sound B also sounds ugly to me. I don't know why. I really like palatals. Palatals are my favorite. And then labial velars are nuts too. Fair enough. Uh, that, that was that was really cool. They've, they've been working on that since seventh grade. I, I only got into it in like junior year of high school. You, you I, was so much, like, background there. I was horrible with that. Yeah. Well, that's how we I, all start out, right? Yeah. Uh, Joanna, are you ready to go now, or should I go? I can probably go now. Um, uh, it is ugly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me share. Can I? Um, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in class right now. I have been skipping class to go to um, Hull's. They didn't tell me when class was scheduled until we had already decided the whole schedule. Um, but yeah, I have discovered I still need to be in class more times. So <laughs> that is why. Um, yeah, so on my computer, I am in class. So um, I got to send a link somehow to this spreadsheet. Let me share it with Adam. Okay, so will you like email me the spreadsheet and then I share it? Yeah. All right. This is the one that looks really janky, right? Um, I I shared. It's called Makur Makur. I still don't know how to pronounce that vowel, and um, it is very janky. Okay, I got it. Uh, sharing screen. I'm gonna make this bigger. Cool. Okay. Oh, let me present. I can go to the first slide. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm a boomer. How do I present? I, I don't use slides. I use PowerPoint. <laughs> There's present, present. Is okay. at the top. All right. Okay. All right. We're good. <laughs> okay. So, um. I'm a massive nerd who likes dragons. So um, Adam and I are in this um, conlang class at MIT. So this is my second conlang I've made. Um, it's still bad, probably. Um, 
but not as bad as my first one. So this is probably, this is, um, it's a language designed to be for dragonborn. Um, so the idea is that they're uh, basically a species that shows up in D and D. They're humanoid, um, but are descended from dragons. Um, so the language is descended from the language that dragons currently speak, um, but it has some influences from common. So if you go to the next slide, I I am unable to add tables nicely without a, a lot of work. So if you click the link to the spreadsheet, okay, cool. Um, so the word list has what my consonants are. So um, I have, I was originally planning on having the bilabial stuff only come from, uh, from common, which is like the language that humans speak. And then everything else would be for um, the dragonborn, uh, like the dragon aspect. And then uvular, instead of it being like the actual uvula, it's basically something else that I'm gonna pretend is uvular like other sort of organs in their throat that is re related to their fire breathing. Um, as it says, every voiceless stop can be made ejective. And I thought it'd be sort of cute if the adjectives are accompanied by a burst of flame. Um, I only have four vowels and none of them are the schwa. Um, and I'm not very good at pronouncing one of them, which is the back high vowel but I'm gonna pretend that I can. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, um, like to when it reaches some verbs, I, I steal the like Semitic three consonant system where basically um, verbs are, um, have like three consonants and then like the vowels do various things. Um, but like the stem is just the three consonants. Um, yeah, okay, so let's, you can go to the, well, the next slide, it, it just tells us to go to, it is, I guess we can go to um, assignment two. Um, sorry that this is so janky. Um, so basically, um, it has some stuff about how I, like, borrowed from true draconic and from common. So it's descended from true draconic, but it, it like, borrows some words later on from true draconic. So, like, um, basically, I, I also changed the name of my language a lot of times, so this is sketchy. Um, but basically, um, it, it, there's different kinds of dragons, um, like red dragons, blue dragons, gold dragons, the chromatic ones, which are evil, and the, the, silk, or the metallic ones are good. And so various length like words that they borrowed from metallic dragons are more likely to be like associated with like peace and literature and stuff and the ones from like say red dragons is is gonna be stuff about like destruction and stuff um they also have borrowings from common which i decided to have phonology pretty similar to english um and i have some ideas about how i want to change the language um I, I originally was gonna like have, as I said, bilabials only come from uh, common, borrowings from common. The idea was gonna be like a lot of borrowing from common, just like we brought, like English borrowed a lot from French. Um, but then my uh, professor pointed out, apparently he knows D&D &D as well, that um, like both of the dragon uh, deities have like M's in their names. So I haven't decided how I want to deal with that yet. Um, and we can go back to the spreadsheet. Um, uh, slide five, sorry, the sorry, the slides. Yeah. So um, Oh, wait, no, okay, sorry, I am bad. Uh, let's let's go back to the spreadsheet. Um, for assignment three. Um, so I have so for nouns, Sorry that this is so ugly. For nouns, I have um, animate and inanimate nouns that act differently. So basically for animate nouns, they use nominative accusative, which means basically like the subject of the sentence um, looks the same if it's the subject of a transitive 
verb or the, the subject of an intransitive verb, depending on whether it's the object. But for inanimate objects, the it looks the same whether it's the subject of a um, inanimate or intransitive verb or if it's the object of a um, transitive verb. Um, so basically, we care more about what happens to inanimate objects. And then for animate objects, we care more about like who, who's doing it. Um, that was my idea for the split. Um, uh, I also have genitive in for in, for animate nouns um, and fake genitive for inanimate nouns, which I, I think I was planning on making it um, have some sort of particle. I haven't decided that all the way. Um, Verbs, um, so the nouns have like, oh, sort of weak. They have singular, dual, and plural. Um, dual is rare for inanimate objects. It's only used for things like eyes and stuff. For animate, it's always there. Um, and it, that goes in front of the, the noun and the, the vowels in the middle. So like um, the nouns also sort of have the three consonantal system, except for when they're borrowed or after some language change, they sometimes lost it because the uh, the three consonant system is not essential to nouns. Like the, the vowels are all the same basically um, once they're declined. Um, but for verbs, the three consonantal system is very strict um, except for, for the verb for to be. Um, I have the idea that adjectives are like, I won't have adjectives and they'll, they'll basically be like, uh, clauses with the verb. So like a verb, like a, a blue um, shellfish is shellfish that is blue. Um, so, um, and so verbs I have the are, are pretty regular. So the second vowel basically is like what aspect slash tense. Um, and then the first is mood, which I guess I'll explain later. Um, and now I think we can go back to the slides. Um, so slide five, I guess. So the way that I do indirect statements, I'll just say, like for example, if it says she says, she said that she has a cat. Um, also, the way that I'm doing present tense, I think they don't we don't we don't really distinguish between like oh I guess I, I should explain what what um, perfective and imperfective is basically aspect is basically like whether it's been completed or not maybe all of you guys know it already I don't know um, but I would guess probably not and then also present past that's about tense um, future tense is going to be by mood um, so if in the sentence she said that she had a cat. Um, so all these are animate, they all breathe. So like they're humans or animals, that's what animate means. I forgot, I forgot to explain that. So um, basically um, the verb is, oh, I also never said verb, it's verb, um, subject, object. So it's gonna be verb, subject, and then basically the object is the um, indirect statement. And so that's organized in a similar way. So then that will be verb, subject, object again. Um, but then the subject will actually be um, treated like if it's the object. Um, so next slide, um, relative clauses. So um, what like slide you have- What slide are you on right now? What? I I'm, co I'm confused what slide you want me to be on. Six. Okay. Which is what you're on, I think. Okay, good. Um, so this is uh, relative clauses. Um, basically, you have a placeholder pronoun taking the place of where it would have been in the clause. Um, so that, that, I mean, I basically have examples there. Um, yeah. Um, and finally, the writing system is on slide seven, the next slide. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see the picture, but this one I had 
um, it, it's kind of silly. So it's an abjad. Um, and I noticed that I had like 31 consonants. And um, so I decided 31 is one less than 32 and 32 is to the power of five. And dragonborns have five claws. So I decided each letter would be made with a different combination of claws. So um, like one, one, one sound would be made with, you know, uh, a, a single, like your thumb and the other one would be made with your second, fourth and fifth finger or whatever. Um, and I don't really have a good justification for this. And also, I guess it's very convenient that the sounds line up perfectly with the letters. Um, but I thought it was sort of cute. Um, I was thinking that a fake justification I could give for why they went to this effort is like, if you can also like, it's there's a very simple sort of like sign language when you basically, you can just hold up the, the fingers that correspond to um, which fingers you'd be using to write the um, symbol. And I guess the justification for why sign language would be useful is, you know, if the language often in involves like breathing out puffs of smoke or, or puffs of fire when you're doing adjectives, then you might not want to do that inside. And also if you're around a lot of hu uh, humans and your language is very loud, then that might bother them as well. And um, also humans, when they're speaking to you, they might not be able to make all the sounds like for example, the fake uvular. Um, so maybe that is some justification. Um, also it's written, it's, it's written using clause, as I said, and it, like they use it using clay tablets. Um, I think that's everything the, the, the vowels are added on. Um, so in, in written language, if they don't add the vowels, then it's basically, um, it's, it, you basically can't tell about, um, uh, number and case and uh, uh, like tense and stuff, but when it's spoken, you can, which is sort of like the opposite of French, at least for number, um, for the most part. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, if you have some advice on how I can have the interface of or like how draconic and common mixed together to make my language, how to make that justify that, that'd be pretty cool. Wait, could you hear my class going on in the background? I should have probably just turned off the volume altogether. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I like dragons. Um, I'm in class and so this is janky. Um, that is all. <laughs> Thanks, Joanna. <laughs> Sorry. No, Wait, if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, I was gonna say, I don't know if like, if you could like have M be like some kind of special, like, in, instead of having it actually represent like English M, maybe have it like represent some kind of special dra uh, draconic consonant that only dragons can pronounce. And so it, it gets loaned to something else. Maybe it's like just a puff of, like maybe it's just like exhaling or something like that. Yeah, so like sort of how I did the fake uvular thing. Cool, yeah. okay. I don't know. Okay, that's a good advice, thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm honestly wondering, like, will they even like technically have lips? Maybe it can be like their teeth, like by dental or something like that, like. <laughs> Yeah, so I was thinking that dragonborns could sort of make bilabial sounds, but dragons couldn't, but maybe that's unrealistic anyway. They do look like they have pretty similar facial structure to dragons. Um, yeah, so yeah, maybe it was like dental stuff or yeah. They definitely can't make anything. So like, I can see them be able to make ma sounds, but not really being able to make, um, hmm like definitely definitely no like f so i i had a f in, like the fi which is basically like bilabial instead of like lips plus teeth which is what we have in english for f 
<laughs> I had a bird language once uh, spoken by the great tit bird, and I used M to represent just like a closure of the beak. Um, okay. And so I guess it, it was similar enough to M in that aspect, but. Okay. Um, I, I like that. Have you ever like used clay? Like, have you like, gotten like a, a, like a sheet of clay to try to see what it would look like, like written on a tablet? Um, I did try like tracing it out using my fingers, but I have not gone to clay tablet, but I do have clay and that's a great idea. <laughs> I don't have sharp claws either. <laughs> I can like stick some chopsticks onto my fingers or something. <laughs> that actually, that sounds really nice. It, once, once you see Adam's presentation, his writing systems, I really like his writing system, it's really pretty. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any more questions or comments for Joanna? All right, uh, then I'll go. Um, I first got into Conlan gang when I, I was visiting Yale, because Yale was my dream school at the time. <laughs> and uh, I, I went to the bookstore and I got The Art of Language Invention by David Peterson, which um, you should absolutely read. Um, and And so, yeah, I, I started like dabbling a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna show you my first attempts at conlangs because eek. Um, I, I was also using notebooks. Um, I, I don't have much uh, uh, extant uh, digital evidence, but uh, I um, this is like uh, just the phonology of, of one of my early con conlangs. Uh, yeah, so that's 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 basically all I can show you from before this uh, MIT class that Joanna and I are taking, up, which is also a great class. Uh, Norvin Richards teaches it. Um, if you have the opportunity to cross register and take it, you should do that because uh, it it was it's been fun and it's like pretty easy. Um, yeah, so that de definitely recommend. Anyway, um, so uh, for the class, uh, we have to make our own language, and like my my dream was to make a language which is just glottal stops and schwas and um, basically have a Morse code of a language or something. Um, but sadly, that that probably did not qualify for um, the standards of the uh, MIT class. Um, so uh, I, I made this uh, this language called Hothash. Um, it's, uh, it's spoken by demons. Uh, there are a few inspirations uh, for, for that. I, I wanted to, uh, I had a conversation with somebody who wanted to make me, uh, who wanted me to make a, um, language for um <laughs> dominant and submissive demons <laughs> and i thought you know it might be funny if if i maybe not that but like uh one language is is um just has voice consonants and, and the other uh is similar but on uh, voiceless consonants and and so so this is my my first attempt at the uh, the voiceless consonant language as you can see from the phonology it's like very very um it's just fricatives everything's voiceless um, all the vowels are voiceless, so the, the language is basically just whispered. Uh, that's the only way it's done. Um, the other inspirations were um, I, I had like an idea for this this world I want to create at some point down the line. Um, so this can help me get toward that. And also, um, Stefan needs it uh, needs demonic stuff for D and D campaigns. So um, hopefully that, that this is helpful to him in some regard. Um, yeah, also, um, my demons don't have noses, so there's nothing nasal anyway, uh, but it's just fricatives, so it doesn't, um, uh, yeah, so, so that's it, uh, f, th, s, sh, h, r, and h, uh, and everything's, yeah, voiceless, uh, pretty standard vowels, um, I, I didn't, I don't have, like, uh, oh, I think I, about my first languages is that, uh, the, like, morphology is just ripping off Latin, uh, I try to get spicy with some ergative absolutive stuff, um, but it still looks a lot like Latin in some regards. Um, I'm still working on I'm trying to be more creative with cases. But um, so one thing my language does is that um, the the speakers uh, contrast um, negative, positive, and neutral words, and I'll, I'll I think I'll get to what that means in a sec. Or um, I can just scroll down quickly and show you now. Uh, Okay, uh, so like a negative word uh, would always start with th, and so like great is th with us, and um, and so so that's the uh, the negative version of awful, which is just with us. So anything 
with the thought in front is declined and conjugated a little bit differently. Um, and then there, there are words which don't really have a nice logical pair, so uh, neutral words. Um, so that's, that's how it's done with both verbs and nouns and adjectives. Um, yeah, so um, for pretty standard verbs. It's basically like instead of gender, really, I, I guess. Um, I just have negative, neutral, positive, and then just uh, standard conjugations and infinitive. Um, I haven't given much thought to like gerunds or fancier verb things. Um, this is still like uh, relatively undeveloped. But I'd like to get, give a, a lot more work um, toward it. Uh, the case, ergative absolutive. Um, I think that's fun. If, if you don't know what that is, it's, uh, it's sort of uh, like uh, how, how we have it, except when uh, uh, like like nominative accusative, but um, in, if the sentence is um, intransitive, then you use what we would use as the uh, accusative instead. Uh, so that's kind of fun, um, and and so uh, yeah, it's uh, oh a thing I, about my language is every word. Uh, so so no consonants are clustered together, no vowels are ever clustered together. So everything's consonant, all consonant vowel. Um, and so all, all, all the, uh, the verb endings are ending with, a, with, a uh, a vowel, um, preceded by a consonant and all the nouns are a, um, vowel, then a consonant. And then if it's, if there's another word after that, you have to have a schwa in between, um, because you can't have the consonants, uh, next to each other. And so the schwa is kind of a placeholder thing. Uh, so it kind of supposed to flow. Um, uh, genitive data, th these do things with, uh, like prepositions, uh, I, I stole some of this from Serbian, uh, it's, it's pretty similar. Oh, and, and I, I think I was inspired a little bit by, uh, Blake's ancient Greek example with the, the box, uh, I, 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 yeah, I did this part relatively recently, so I, I was kind of thinking about that when I, uh, wrote like which prepositions go with uh, genitive, dative, and um, absolutive. Um, yeah, so I, I don't. So I only have one conjugation for verbs. Um, there's no like uh, different conjugation for past, present, uh, future, whatever. Um, so I, I use particles to mark um, whether something's in the the past or in the future or uh, whatever uh so if you want to uh do that kind of stuff uh you just throw the particle in it's also me just being lazy and trying to get it done quickly for my class but um i i was also genuinely interested in in using particles um so those would just like go uh um, before the word in most cases um yeah um i did some stuff with the etymology of my language uh, this is uh like a fun example of how the word surrender started out as Adhvaja and it became uh Um so so like there, yeah, uh different changes. Uh like the big things here to note are that uh vowels and consonants, like they have to be um alternating. Uh if bef before a um uvular uh fricative um any vowel turns into a voiceless high back uh vowel um also before a high back vowel any s becomes uh uh, sh, uh post alveolar um yeah uh so you can start, sort of see a sneak peek of my writing system here um word order is Object, subject, verb. I sometimes forget to do this, so I might in my example sentences have one that's accidentally not. I think, yeah. Um, but um, or maybe I fixed it. Uh, but yeah. So, like, uh, instead of like the demon sees that human, you'd say that man the demon sees, um, which still sort of makes some sense. Uh, and. Yeah, so here, here it's like uh, the man is absolutive, uh, the demon is ergative, and sees his third thing. So that's a 
pretty standard. Um, and that would be pronounced uh, And if you're going to start saying that it sounds like parcel tongue, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Parcel tongue has like a bunch of stops and um, it has. Uh, yeah, so it, it's really not that similar. I wasn't even thinking of parcel tongue when I made it, but if you think it sounds like it, oh, whatever. Um, okay, uh, back to the thing. Uh, I take your life. Oh, all these like sentences are going to be really aggressive because it's about um, demons torturing humans. Um, so, uh, you, genitive, like life of you, I take uh, pretty much. Um, so, um, and and then the, the demon sees that human. It's basically the same thing as before, except uh, this time uh, we can play with the word order and put the demon first to show that the demon is being stressed. Um, so if that particular demon is seeing a human, uh, then that goes first. Uh, if the demon is seeing the human, then the seeing goes first. So, yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm, I have a syllabary. I have a, so since I only have uh, seven, uh, seven different consonants and uh, seven different vowels, um, I thought it'd be fun if I uh, have a setup that looks like this. Um, so each symbol uh, corresponds to uh, a consonant and each color corresponds to a vowel. These demons are, uh, I don't know, they're immortal magical people, so they don't really have to worry about like coloring in their uh, drawings. They can just like will it to appear and it'll be uh, a script. Um, so that's that's why color uh, can be included. And I, I thought that was fun. Uh, I, I've always really liked how like color and language can interplay a little bit. Um, and and so, yeah, it's, it's uh, very ordered, I guess. Um, but I, I like how like runic it looks. Um, it's written left to right because again, I am lazy uh, and don't want to overthink things. Um, there, when I write it, I put like two spaces between the different words. So you can hopefully see that it's a little spaced out. Uh, yeah, and it's supposed to be carved into obsidian. Uh, my vocabulary right now is like a little over like 110, 120 words. Um, I started out with a bunch of nouns. I didn't really use the uh, the the recommended word lists uh, to start with because I was just excited to jump to the um, the stuff that demons should be doing. Um, and also, I, I, I like there's some stuff for class that I had to do, uh, and I think Stefan requested me to make a few words. Um, so that's how those got thrown in. Um, yeah, you, you you can sort of see not not too many, but there there are there are like a fair number of uh, negative high is the negative of of uh, low, uh, which is hosas, and this is uh, Um And so like the adverbs, uh, I I'm not. Uh, there's there's no conjugation going on there, uh, and uh, same with adjectives I think, uh, but but they look like uh, the nouns in a lot of cases. Um, uh, this is just for me to co easily copy and paste the thing. Uh, I whipped that up in Microsoft Paint, uh, as you can probably tell. Um, uh, so all I have left is uh, a few uh, example sentences. Um, we've already went over a lot of. D Demons killing humans, but this one just throws the doubt particle in front. Um, I hope my whispers are coming through on Zoom well. Um, here is uh, where are the brave children? Uh, so you put the doubt particle first, and then uh, brave children are in a location, so they're they're uh, uh, like lock locative for that reason. Um, uh, the word for where uh, and uh, the past particle, uh, oh, I guess this is where we're the brave children. Um, yeah, uh, so it would be, uh, um, and, oh, I forgot to mention that, uh, stress is just, like, also very standard because I'm boring. Um, it's just, um, penultimate, 
unless there's only one syllable. So yeah, I'm boring. Um, let's see. Uh, it says it has a cat. Cat it have it say. Um, uh, um, demon who is sad sees that human a lot of demons and humans seeing each other in my example sentences um that's just showing how relative clauses are gonna um fit in there um and i take your life which is pitiful um so, so the life of you which be pitiful i take is sort of how uh maybe you'd translate into english uh it's uh Shusha vase vasa thosa so 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 fiesa kudasa hotha. And then I translate a whole poem, which I'm not gonna say out loud, but um that was also for an assignment, but um looks looks kind of fun. And um I also didn't bother putting the characters because that would just be a nightmare. Um if anybody wants to help me make a word or has suggestions or comments or questions, um Please let me know. Uh, it's it's still very much a work in progress, and I'm still also very much learning the conlang process. Not nearly on the level of Jacob, but um, um, it's, it's definitely been fun. Um, does anybody have any uh, comments, or or if you want to help me think up a new word? So you said like this is a language used like by demons to curse humans. Is that what you said? Uh, pretty much. It's yeah. It's it's used to torture humans in hell. Okay, so is it like you said like you have to carve it on obsidian? So is it like possible for like non humans, I guess, to like use the language like as far as like the color goes? Um. So this is yeah part part of an idea I had for a book that I will never write. Um, but uh, y yes, theoretically, um, were some like other species to figure out uh that you should write these runes in these colors in this order um theoretically it should have an effect of uh doing the same thing um in in the the universe that i uh wanted to make um so yeah Anybody want a, a word? How about something like, uh, do you have a word for like cold, like temperature? Yeah, I think so. Cold, yeah, you do. Okay. Uh, and that's, I think that's a negative word with hot being, yeah, the opposite. So normally like what we would associate with like being good uh, is their negative word and their positive word would be like, something we'd uh, shy away from. Interesting. Uh, what about that uh, word for feeling of walking into a, a room? Um, <laughs> we can do that. Uh, Jonah Boylan has entered the waiting room. OK, uh, let's see. I, I Do I have a word for walk? I don't. Um, I think I have think. Yes, okay, I I think, uh, and just an idea. You probably yeah. have like a word for torture or something, so you could maybe make it like think torture or something. I don't have the word torture itself, but I have like uh dominate. Uh, I have grovel. Uh. Yeah, I, I definitely need to throw in more more torturing words. Do you have the word for um, pain? Uh, uh, of course. Um, oh, I guess I guess. Think, uh, B, uh, location torture, <laughs> could work. Um, so, uh, let's let's see what we can do with that. Uh, I'm just gonna paste them all to the same place. So I can have that. Uh. So that's that's B. My my words are like I'm I'm trying to cap them at like four syllables, um. So maybe I'll just like uh, I don't I don't know I haven't given much thought about uh, uh 
pain uh, there we go. Uh, you could probably like for like for the si the the sicha you could probably get rid of the 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 h huh, because that's like a yeah. that's a syllable anyways. Definitely, definitely. Um, can get rid of that. Um, so let's see. That that puts me at one, two, three, five five syllables. I can just uh, I decide I don't like this the uh. So we'll make that the word for, um, how do I <laughs> gloss this in English? Uh, you can make it like a, like walk, walk and forget font. Cool, we did it. Uh, um, yeah, th thank you all for coming to the uh, last meeting of the semester. Uh, we should have some fun things lined up for for next semester, and that was that was really cool seeing uh, Jacob and Jonas Conlang. So, thank you for coming. Thank you so much.